Hi everyone and welcome to chapter three, retail management, a strategic approach. So you can see things are a little different from the one that, um, or maybe you might not, I just uh, updated the chapter a little bit and I will post it today. So certain objectives for this chapter, right? To show the value of strategic planning for all types of retailers and to explain uh, the steps in strategic planning for retailers. So this is what we're gonna look at. To also look at, uh, to examine the individual controllable and uncontrollable elements of a retail strategy and to present strategic planning as a series of integrated steps. And also to demonstrate how a strategic plan can be prepared. Uh, I also added this here for you, and uh, I forgot to take off the animation. I apologize for this. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of terms that you were, we're gonna look at and specifically so you can stop here take a look at or look at the doc and that's attached to this file in uh, Moodle. Okay so let's continue so retail strategy over plan overall plan I should say or framework of action that guides a retailer usually it lasts one year and there's goals uh, there's markets there's surveys and there's missions and and uh, also sales plans that go with it on this on a regular basis. Budgets is another thing that also would be part of this. So elements of a retail strategy, as you can see, goes from uh, all the way from situational analysis, objectives, identification of consumers, overall strategy, specific activities, and control. So what are the benefits of doing this, of doing strategic retailing? or planning, I should say. Well, it provides a thorough analysis of requirements for doing business for all types of retailers. It outlines the goals, for sure. It allows retailers to determine how different, to differentiate itself from competitors. It allows retailer to develop an offering that appeals to a group of customers, target marketing, for sure. Offers analysis of the legal, economic, and competitive environment. Uh, provides for the coordination of the firm's total efforts and encourages anticipation and avoidance of crisis. So if there is a crisis, this is one way of doing it, right? so you'll have answers. So this is a really not a reactive uh, planning, this is a proactive planning. And you also have to have organizational missions, right? The retailers' commitment to a type of business and to a distinctive role in the marketplace. We've uh, looked at mission statements before. And here's a funny one, I would say, this is from uh, Frisch's restaurant. I'm not sure if this is a, uh, a true restaurant chain. I would think it is, or maybe in today's world, it doesn't exist anymore. So you could read that. And I also added one here for you for McDonald's. So this is McDonald's mission statement, and that is McDonald's uh, vision statement also. Okay, so ownership and management alternatives, right? Uh, again, we're, we've seen this, I think, in the past. I'm quite sure we have, and we're going to see it again in the future when it comes to uh, business law. A sole proprietorship is an unincorporated retail firm owned by one person. A partnership is an unincorporated retail firm owned by two or more persons, each with a financial interest. And a corporation is a retail firm that is formally incorporated under state or provincial law. It is a legal entity apart from its officers. A checklist to consider when starting a new business. There's a whole bunch of them there. And I'll give you another one also, right? Uh, checklist for purchasing an existing retail business here. Why is a seller placing the business up for sale? And like, like this list, as you can see, it is unending. There's a lot of stuff that you have to look at, in this case, when you want to start your own business. We are going to look into details into this checklist uh, when we uh, get into Venture Startup. Okay, so let's continue. So you also have uh, selected kinds of retail goods and service establishments, durable goods, non-durable goods, are two and also selected kinds of retail goods and uh, service establishments. You have service establishments, uh, which are personal, and you have service establishments that are amusement, 
You also have service establishments that are repair, in many cases cars or appliances, and also hotels. So when it comes to services, as you can see, as we talked about last time, how services vary enormously being intangible versus products uh, being tangible and durable. Uh, also, image and positioning. An image represents how a given retailer is perceived by consumers and others. Again, this is very subjective in today's world with social media and even more so today with the transparency that is required in pivot plans from customers or from, uh, from different uh, competitors and from different uh, organizations. So this is really important today. And an image is, is really scrutinized more so today than ever. And also this positioning and image and positioning, this is a concept of a store image which was used by, by Mr. Pierre Martineau in 1958. This shows you how far back that is. I was not even born then uh, for the first time. So defined as a store, defined in customer's mind, partly based on functional attributes and partly based on psychological attributes. This was written in a book by Pierre Martineau in 1958 uh, titled The Personality of the Retail Store. I would imagine if he had to rewrite this book today, it would certainly be way different than this book that was written. But there again, there's a lot of terminologies and things that are very relative even then are still relative today. Right, so positioning approaches, we have uh, a few. First one we have is mass merchandising, a position approach whereby retailers offer a discount or value-oriented image. And uh, we have niche, a retailing occurs when retailers identify specific customer segments and deploy unique strategies. So let's look at that in particular. Uh, again, this is an old slide. I'm not sure this company exists. I still, again, hear music. I would think more like Spotify. But uh, niche, the more realistic today would be probably uh, Lululemon. So Lululemon is really specific to a certain uh, product and a specific uh, group of uh, marketing or target market in uh, the economy. So this is what they look for in when it comes to niche. Also, at this figure, we look at selected retail positioning strategies. As you can see, what plays a big part here is price and service and versus product and lines offer. So you can see that uh, depending on where you lie when it comes to price and service versus product lines offered. If you look at membership clubs, right, price and service and products. If you look at upscale specialty stores, price plays a huge part here and there is uh, no service, there's no product here on this side. And a target market selection, we have three techniques. Uh, first one is mass marketing, concentrated marketing, and differentiated marketing also, right? So if you look at all three examples of mass marketing, right, would be certainly companies that uh, go out and uh, sell products globally, and are all over the place and the brands are recognized. Uh, sometimes you don't even have to read it uh, and you know exactly if you look at the product's packaging, uh, as we see here, uh, this is called ubiquitous, meaning that it's all over the place and it's recognized easily. Right, so mass marketing. Here are some it's a bit of information, selling goods and services to a broad spectrum of consumers Conventional supermarkets and drugstores certainly are part of mass mass marketing. Next one is concentrated marketing. And in concentrated marketing, this is uh, really uh, more of a niche market. And in many cases, if you look at the certain companies that do have niche markets, uh, they really go after, it really zeroes in, as it says right there, on one specific group. And it is a small scale, upscale men's shoe store might use this technique. But do understand, uh, just because they're niche markets does not mean that they're not big billion dollar markets. They still are. One example is also if you look at gamers, machine or video or software gamers, 
certainly that is a huge niche market if you have to sell them uh, certain earphones or certain uh, uh, paraphernalia that they would use uh, that would be a huge billions and billions of dollars in niche market today uh, it's really exploding so that's another example and uh, the last one is differentiated marketing right uh, this entails aiming at two or more distinct consumer groups with different retailing approaches for each group and department store seeks seek multiple segments so department stores will play a big part but uh, there are many different types that come into play and the next one here uh, Jean Philippe Patisserie a shop of distinction so here it's a the selection of a target market and its satisfaction by a unique retail offering are needed to for the retailers to reach the goal so this is really premium but very distinct so retailers better able to select a target market and satisfy customers and needs if it has a good understanding of what the consumer behavior is and strategic implications of target market techniques right so all of these will come into play retailers location if there is a location online or off uh, goods and services mix if you have just goods or products or do you sell both products and services promotion efforts price orientation are they competitive or not strategic or what is your strategy that plays a big part so to develop an overall retail strategy you have to look at variables and you have controllable versus uncontrollable so as you can see there controllable or store location uh, from store location all the way down communicating with the customer those are controllable uncontrollable are the actual consumers themselves uh, the economic or the economy itself the economic conditions and also in Canada specifically uh, seasonality we have so many seasons that products vary enormously and so this plays a very big uncontrollable part so like if you could see what's happening if we have a longer summer or a longer winter uh, certain products might be in need and some others won't or if we have a winter with no snow right so winter with no snow is an uncontrollable variable and if you are running a business of, uh, of removing snow uh, if you don't have contracts or you have issues with that then you might have uh, less business and legal and environment and retailing the store location plays a big part when it comes to zoning laws this is called bylaws here in my in the city and in the city you'll have every little area that or a little um, city or a little part of the city that has different uh, different laws and regulations or different bylaws uh, blue laws also have to do with the actual system of, uh, the, of more in the states than it would be about here in Canada environmentally laws direct selling laws on and on it goes there's a lot of different types of laws that come into play when you are in retail that you have to pay attention uh, one of them certainly would be uh, blue laws or I should say recycling laws like a blue law would certainly have to do with the fact of uh, um, not shopping at a specific time or date and now again more and more stores are open and blue laws are becoming non-existent uh, managing the business also as you can see all the way down to recycling so next we have also um, also in legal environment and retailing the actual merchandise management and pricing where trademarks plays a huge part uh, collusion laws sales taxes sales prices here in Quebec we have two taxes and also consumer protection laws that we have in Quebec that are priced discriminative or will help uh, uh, solve or eliminate price discrimination uh, next we'll look at also communicating with the customer you know in truth and advertising again in today's world this is something that is uh, seen as a, a no-no if you're tr you're uh, if you exaggerate your advertising and uh, you can actually lose all your business if you do that telemarketing uh, bait and switch laws and we'll take we'll get to that in a minute also you have inventory and also uh, you have labeling and cooling off laws so bait and switch means the action of advertising goods which are an apparent bargain 
right, with the intention of substituting inferior or more existing goods or more expensive goods. So in other words, you, you put the bait and then when it comes to the end, boom, you switch it and you actually sell a, a, a bigger or a more uh, expensive product than the actual product that uh, customers were looking for. Okay, so that plays a big part. And the cooling off period is also got to do when a consumer uh, decides to cancel a certain contract, there has to be a certain cooling off period that they could return the products. Consumer protection here in Quebec allows a 30 day cooling period, cooling off period. And here's an example of a strategic um, sample of a strategic plan, I should say. Sally's is a small, independently owned, high fashion ladies clothing shop located in a suburban strip mall. It is full price, full service store for the fashion forward shoppers. Sally's career carries sportswear from popular designers as a personal shopper for busy executives and has an on-premises tailor. The store is updating its strategic plan as a means of getting additional financing for an anticipated uh, expansion. So uh, this is maybe something that you might have to do uh, come project time in this course. You might have to come up with a strategic plan. Uh, additional concerns also got to do with uh, what's happening around the world, right? Uh, assess your international potential, select your countries, develop, implement, and review. So we've done this in global marketing, but this also plays, in, plays a big part in, in uh, uh, retailing. Other factors that plays a huge part in, in global uh, retailing, even more so timing, uh, very balanced program internationally, a growing middle class, certainly, or even, even an elderly class, matching concept to marketing, to market, I should say, solo or partnering plays a big part, store location facilities, product selection also is part of the factors that affect the success of global retailing today. And here's a graph, factors to consider when engaging in a global retailing. We're not going to go through that, but as you can see, there's a lot of factors from institutional, consumer, store location, operations, merchandising, pricing, and image and promotional factors. These are all factors that plays a big part, not just internationally, but nationally also in many cases. And I've added this also just to give you an understanding a little bit more about, you know, core or companies that need to pivot in retailing today more and more. I apologize if I misspelled retailing. I'll fix that in a minute. Online presence is a big part. Uh, newly, new and flexible also is a big part that comes into play that companies have to be able to deliver new goods and also at the same time need to uh, be able to uh, find ways to, to develop a delivery way of, of delivering products that is more than just one. You need to be delivered sometimes even later at night. In other words, nine to five uh, is gone. That doesn't exist anymore. And also what's starting to go away a lot is competition. In many cases, comp competitors are working together to survive in a world that we're living today. So a lot of competitors are collaborating and maybe if one store or one restaurant or one company can't has a, a machine breakdown, let's say, then they're gonna collaborate with another one that they're gonna help them out in, in the worst of times to make sure that they get their products out. So things like that have happened, are happening. And so it is a different world we're in today and you know, competition is uh, deemed completely different than what it was. Because in no way, shape or form uh, are we going back to something prior to March 2020. That date will, uh, that month will uh, live in infamy, no doubt about it, for the rest of our lives, for sure. Enough said, great, thank you, and we'll see you later.